Um, Hannah, do you want to introduce our, our guest then? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Adriana, for joining our group tonight. Uh, we are very happy to having you. I had the fortune to take Adriana's workshop in Chicago. Uh, it's where like three years ago, I, I f first uh, found her work and it's really beautiful, her, her style, the colors, the way she, she draws, it's really, it, it makes me happy when I see that. So then Adriana was uh, traveling here in Jacksonville in February and we met and we, Again, I had the fortune to sketch with her and then I, I invited her. Thank you, Adriana, for coming. And please, um, you can share more about your, your work. With, um, yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you, honey. That was a beautiful introduction. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for having me. I am very pleased to be here with you guys. I really like to uh, share what I do and uh, see what others have to say. And I really like, um, you know, this experience of the community that it is uh, for us urban sketchers. Uh, my name is Adriana Gasparich. I'm uh, Mexican. Uh, I was born in Mexico. Now I live in the United States. And um, I was working for the food industry. I'm, I'm a food engineer. And I have zero background in art whatsoever. But um, my husband helped me to understand that I needed to do something in order to integrate myself into the community, into, into understand the American society. And he was very kind to put me, you know, point at me several activities to do. And then I ended up, you know, signing up for a workshop in uh, drawing and another workshop in watercolor in the junior Joliet uh, in uh, here in Illinois, which I think is a very renowned junior college uh, here in, in Illinois, in the United States actually. So it was a brief workshop, it was like six classes uh, each, but it was uh, good enough to start and uh, put my experiences on paper and it started everything like a diary really. Um, I started doing some by the way, if you want to ask questions, just please ask at any time. I don't mind at all. I would like to be more like a group of friends talking about experiences. And uh, I will leave, but I also like to hear yours. So please, anytime you want to do that, please do it, okay? I started doing like a diary. Uh, it wasn't urban sketching at all. Uh, you know, drawing objects like my swim gear and uh, my husband, uh, lobster, you know, subjects. And then I started to do places. This is uh, Sunnyville Island. This is back in 2010. And then um, I just grabbed whatever I wanted, you know, whatever. I really like pen more than pencil because pen gives me more defined uh, shape of the forms uh, of what to, you know, or what I'm going to put on paper. So I started a small, as you can see, this is a, a sketchbook that is small, but it has a lot of pages. When you are starting, you just want, you know, the most of your, you know, for your money. <laughs> so I bought a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, sketches with this uh, kind of paper. But over time, you know, the quality starts to get you know, yellowish on the edges. And then you see that you, when you start to do more and more, I think that you think of yourself of uh, upgrading a little bit and finding more about uh, what materials you like to use. Um, I was using totally the wrong pen. As I told you, I'm a food engineer and I'm familiar with these uh, technical pens that I'm gonna show you, which obviously for this is a rapidograph um, for a workshop that I, a rapidogra rapidograph. Gosh, I haven't used one of those in years. Uh, exactly. I know, I remember when I was a teenager. <laughs> like technical pens to for technical drawings. And you know, these are, they clog easily and they really don't glide easily on the paper. So I was, 
it wasn't enjoyable, but that's what I knew. That's what I had in mind. And, um, you know, I have them since my, you know, since I, I was studying the university. So I was just recycling, right? But then um, I started to do my own thing with the, the, the sketches. Um, I even, I did, I, I did my own, um, excuse me for crossing. I have all my sketches on the right side of it. I started to do my own uh, sketchbooks because I really didn't know that much about, I just knew about the blocks of watercolor paper. And then I went to do it in a more practical way on the size that I like. And I did this, my, you know, my own. Um, and, uh, you know, little by little, you've asked, you, you are progressing and doing research and you're doing, um, trying different things. Uh, eventually, I wanted to see if there was other people who were uh, interested in this kind of uh, activity. I was, I felt isolated, alone. I actually ended up find, finding uh, the Urban Sketchers International. And then <laughs> when I contact them, because I wanted to, to my work to be featured in their web, they declined and <laughs> they told me that it was only by invitation, according by, you know, by, by, by style and background and not background, styles and, you know, different styles. And uh, well, I, I was very sad that I was declined, but I, I tried to find out, that's when I learned about the urban sketchers that existed. And then um, I look here in Chicago and there was none, there was no chapter in Chicago because I knew that there were, other cities already that they have their, their own chapter. So finally, when, like two or three years later, uh, I learned that the Urban Sketcher was formed by Alex Sonics, Sonis. Um, and then I joined immediately. And um, the first time I sketched with her, it, it were only three persons. Uh, and that was like in 2000, uh, Oh my goodness, I have the day, but I, I think it's 2013. There were only three people and then we'd catch the train and we sketch on the, on the train, on the, on the brown line, if I remember well. And uh, we sketch people, we just went to the end of the line and we returned and that was the session. It was fun, um, but then it grew it grow exponentially and to the point that I was uh, invited to participate as a instructor which uh, I was a little bit hesitant because, <laughs> you know, it was the first time in English. So I uh, says, okay, let's do it. And it was a wonderful experience. And then I, uh, for a second year, I submitted uh, a workshop to teach. That's when I met Hannah. And um, it was a wonderful experience. And then I also volunteered at uh, the Urban Sketchers International in Chicago that happened in 2018, Hannah? 17. 18, 20 Seven, 17, 2017. 2017. All right. Exactly. So, uh, you know, seeing all the community there was like, oh my God, here is this person. Oh my God, here is this person. So this is how Urban Sketcher sketching uh, came back to my, came to my life um, as a way to integrate myself into society, to make friends, to understand um, the American society. So it was, very positive experience for me. Um, nowadays, I am not very prolific. I'm a little bit crafty, so I do other things, but sketching is one of those. And um, uh, what I wanna talk about what to sketch or what do I sketch and uh, how frequent or how I determine what to use. I am not married to any uh, brand or paper uh, what I do is that I try to keep a small size uh, a sketchbooks like these ones, like the moleskin uh, on my purse. And when I have an opportunity or I know that I'm gonna have little time, I use a small uh, a sketchbook like this because I know I'm gonna finish soon, right? This was... Uh, it's a long one, right? Uh, and then I've used different brands, some all skin. And then when I uh, joined the Urban Sketchers, uh, one of the sponsors was uh, uh, Stillman and Burn. 
and uh, they are they also do very good uh, quality sketchbooks and uh, I try to keep one of these in my pocket because you never know there's an opportunity or when I am when I know that I'm limited with time I, I use this this size. Um, this is one that I recently bought it's a Portuguese uh, a sketchbook made by Laloran. Um, I love this quality paper. They don't sell this one here in the United States. I really like it because it has very smooth surface and I really like how it glides on paper. I am a fan of paper because I love the smell of paper. I love uh, how the ink glides on the paper with just those juicy lines and then the watercolor, how it behaves so um, unexpectedly. Sometimes it's fun to do watercolor. So I do like watercolor. And then that's my to go, but I, I am open to other materials uh, when I have time. This is Jacksonville, by the way. This is Hannah. That's the body. This is uh, some birds that I saw in the Jacksonville Arboretum. This opened the, the, the wings. It was absolutely amazing. It was like aninga, aninga. Anahingas, yeah. Right, they were beautiful, big birds. The only 70 degrees that we had in Jacksonville, I went straight to the beach, <laughs> to Neptune Bay. Uh -huh. this, is, this is not on location, but I, I went to this cafe with Anna, Sana. I don't, I don't really... Um, deprive myself from just being exclusively on location. No, I do work at home. I like to do that. This, uh, I started with Hannah and I finished it with my husband because uh, I didn't finish with Hannah. We were talking a lot, right, Hannah? I was talking a lot, actually. <laughs> Poor Hannah, she was dealing with me. <laughs> this is an Agustin. I didn't do this on location. It was super hot there. This I did on location. So as you can see, this is in, um, this is Avondale, this is not Jacksonville, it's, it's Avondale um, in a street mall. And this is uh, Savannah, well, this is another story. So, um, and then I started to be more comfortable with bigger sizes. I, I, I moved to the, uh, I'm sorry, have it here as um, a message later, okay. I start to move to this uh, brand, which is also a good, a good paper, it's better. It's the same brand than this, this is what this is a hard book, but this is better quality. This is what I call her actually. And uh, I went to bigger sizes because I feel more confident. I, I don't know if, if you have, this happens to you, but the bigger the, the sketch that you do, the more difficult it is to put the proportions right. Or that happens to me. Um, I started to do um, one of my trips to Mexico, I went to five different locations, five different, um, I stayed in five different places. So the kitchens are always interesting. This is my brothers, this is my dad's, this is my sister's. And then uh, I think there was one more. This is a, a fail a sketch that I didn't like at all. And then I redid it from another angle at this kitchen in uh, Morelia, Michoacan, a uh, rental that we had. And there is another one missing. Um, I got sick eating these shrimps in the market. So there is a, this is a jazz um, concert. Uh, this is the, the last kitchen of the last rental in San Miguel de Allende. Um, uh, this is my husband. This is my husband too getting his massages under the water. Uh, I work on bigger sizes. And then finally I started to do, uh, again, I don't have preference brands. I like to try different brands. This is the, what is the name of this little uh, rooster? Rooster? <laughs> Hanemule, Hanemule, mm -hmm. Hanemule. I start to do that in this one. This is a good paper. I find it a little thin but is it still good? Is it still good? I, I like it too. I like this size A5 because it's very portable. 
it fits everywhere, it's not, it's not very bulky. So I really like it, the size. So you had a couple of pages where you were like checking out the color there that I noticed that you had some color swatches in there. Um, in a couple I don't, of pages. Uh, let me, let me, let me go from the beginning, but I don't know where it is though. Yeah. But no, I normally don't do that. I, I've seen that some artists do that, but I, I, I really don't do that. I just go with, to me, matching the color is not really important and I'm not going to duplicate and I don't print. So I don't think, I don't find it useful. Maybe the graphic designers use it for some reason. I really don't understand why, but they do it, but I, I don't do it. No, I think, you mean this ones? No, no, it was further on. I saw, I don't know. Yeah, oh, that was like there. Oh like yes, I think I, he was, I was trying a combination of these two colors. Uh, for many years, I was taught, or I always believed that black color is not a watercolor color that you use uh, in watercolor. But uh, when I tried it, I really liked it. So I changed my mind about black watercolor paint. And I use it, especially to do this kind of shade. This is, uh, I believe it's, uh, I don't remember what it was this one. I didn't even write it. And then the, the ivory black, I think it is. And this gives me this gray color, which is beautiful. Actually, I made a, a, a color chart with black and I, it looks just great. Uh, but no, I don't do that. Was it Lisa, you asked me? Yes, yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. This is lamp black. I bought this because um, I read the book of uh, Santi Sages. Uh, it is called uh, something about greens, how to make green plants and trees and um, vegetation. Uh, I lost that book. I don't know where I leave it. I think I brought, bring it with me to Mexico and I lost it there. Uh, but uh, I try this lamp black with different colors. And I, when I saw the results, they were like very uh, mute colors that I says, hey, there is a possibility here. Because I thought the black was gonna overwhelm all the colors, but it really is just, you know, handling the right proportion and, and you can get very, very subdued colors like this one. Don't you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fabulous. Um, this is when I went to Washington DC. It was super hot, but it was fun also. This is my community, by the way. This is my town where I live. You know that here in Illinois, everything is so flat. It's boring, you know, landscape wise. <laughs> so there is like a mound in the, this is a park. And I went all the way to the top and I, I sketched the view of the district here. So it's one of the few um, high views that you can see, elevated views. So it's it was interesting to me to, to do that. What uh, size palette do you carry with you and use? Can you repeat that, please? What size uh, watercolor palette do you take with you and use? Okay, well, I have so many different watercolors palettes, but the last one that I, I use is this one that I order to Hungary. Actually, it's two, excuse me. Um, where it is? Oh, here it is. I use this palette, mm -hmm. it's a micro micro. I use this one with this uh, small uh, uh, notebooks or sketchbooks with this palette and then water brushes. This is my- That's, like, that's a whiskey can, right? Yes, it's a whiskey one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I you gave me an idea because mine, I, I did it like the way it comes, but, and I think it, it only allows you to do four colors in each row, but the way you turned it and took the inside pieces out, you can get five in each row. You know what I put in, uh, under this one? I use the sticky potty. Oh, okay. Sticky, okay. Okay. I push and I stare. I just weigh until it sticks and, you know, you can get what? 15 colors. Yeah. 15. So don't ask me what colors are that. I really don't, don't, don't. I, I start, I stopped following what do I buy. I started with Winsor & Newton and then I bought some Daniel Smith. And now I am trying a different brand because 
um, this uh, palette, which is made of brass, is made by, it's actually engraved. Oh, I'm so happy for that. Can you oh, see my name? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, I, apologize. Oh, well, <laughs> I apologize, it's very dirty. Uh, it is made by La Petite. La Petite. 218 palettes made in Bulgaria. It took oh, a wow. while because COVID hit and it took forever to arrive, but it finally arrived. And mm. it is made especially specifically for the, the pan size for the um, Wine Nights, which is a Russian brand. I heard mixed reviews about that, but so far I like them a lot, actually. Mm. I don't know how life fast they are, the, the properties yet. I would have to see that over time, but because I do most usually on, uh, you know, sketchbooks, they're always close and that's fine. Um, and I really like the design. It's, I really like the design because it's compact. I put these ones so when I put it on the table and I hear two, so it doesn't glide. It doesn't glide at all. Mm. And uh, I don't need magnets because this is not, you know, uh, it doesn't have any iron. So magnets are useless, but when you put it like this, this uh, is even with the lid. So I don't force the, the hinge here. So it, it rests very well and it doesn't move at all. So I really like it. And I really like that it has these wells, large wells for larger, uh, for washes. And uh, I think that the size is just perfect. And it doesn't rust. I think it's gonna la you know, last a long time. And um, I think it's worth the price. This is my uh, ultimate gift to myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have the colors here too. I, I did put here. I removed some colors that it came with. Uh, for example, the green, it was very stainy and I really don't like the white, the, the, the paint to be stained. I tried to clean it. Um, Hannah told me, do you clean your palettes after you are done? I, said, I do. I think I'm all CD. Me really too. I do the same thing. <laughs> I'm the same thing. I do the same thing. <laughs> I, I need to clean. I need to clean because I need to see what I'm painting. I, I respect others when they mix with other paints. That's their thing. That's fine. I mean, there is no right and wrong. It's whatever it suits you, right? Whatever you're comfortable with. So this is a palette that I use nowadays. Um, I'm sorry, who asked? Lisa, was it you? Yeah, it was me, Phyllis. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Well, this is materials wise. I, I'm gonna go through those closely, but I just wanted to talk about the things that I like to sketch. Uh, I don't have, I have kind of a rule basically the what and how frequent, how frequent I just told you, I just go when I can, when I know I, I'm going to have to wait for a long time, or I have a, a specific uh, target and I know I'm going to be chosen specifically to sketch and take my time because I am a fan of detail in the sketches. And uh, when I know that I have the time, I let you go even larger. Because you know, when you are doing that, you just get lost in your own world. And it's fascinating to me, the fact that the time passed so fast. Sometimes I'm not so patient, but uh, you know, you do what you do, right? Um, what to sketch? I have like two rules. One is when I say, wow, something beautiful in front of me is something that I really, uh, drops my mouth and says, oh my God, this is gorgeous. Oh, when I have that expression, I have to sketch it. And the other rule that I have to, to listen to myself is when you second, you, you have like a second, two second view to something, you look something and you look again, that brought your attention, that brought my attention, that deserves a second look because it is, even though it's ugly, you can make it beautiful with your sketches because I believe this is the beauty of the community. You can put your sketches the way you want 
And actually, we want to see the way you do it. We want to see your style. So when you practice and uh, other styles from other people, that is practice. But really, what we want to see is your own. And it amazes me when you are teaching a class and you see <laughs> how diverse and how different they are. One subject is amazing. I really like that part of, of teaching that you get to see uh, the different minds put on paper. That's very graphic and I really love it. I really love it. So that is uh, my rule, my two rules to what to sketch. Um, it could be a person, a thing, a place, but I always try to ground or put some perspective around the subject to anchor it to to give a little more information on what's around uh, a subject. For example, at the very beginning, I used to do, let's say this one, a poinsettia. But yeah, but where is it? It's on a table, it's on a room. There is missing information here. This is better because you can see there is like a beach with umbrellas and I am looking from indoors, so there is there is a, a good information, me without knowing, uh, but I guess the intuition tells me put more information on the, on, on the paper. Here, for example, this um, stone crab clothes that we bought in Matlacha, Florida. Yes, they're there, but who's eating them? There's missing information. So with the urbanist sketching, I learned that it is better for me to put that out because that will remind me the relative uh, environment around that subject that caught my, my interest. Um, I think that's more or less, do you have any questions so far? I have, I, I can talk about how to approach a page. I have a list here. Well, uh, I, I do have a question. Yes. Um, go ahead. I was trying to figure out, okay, so you did the uh, paintings with the kitchens, but they look like you're like you're looking into it. It's like you're kind of cap trying to get everything into a small space, which I thought was very interesting because I'm still trying to figure out, like, it's almost like, like a fish eye. It's like something weird happening, and I intentionally want to learn how to do that so bad. And so um, when I saw that, I was like, that's really cool. Like with the kitchens, it's like, and then it's almost trying to like, it's like, even though we can't see everything that's there, the question of like, what else is there was like mm -hmm. in my head, looking at your, your sketches. Yes, I think that um, that's a very good question. And I think that all of the kitchens that I just showed you in this to sketch kind of showed you a little bit about the room, what's in there. My sister is more modern, my dad's more traditional, my brother is ultra-modern with those chairs. Um, it's a matter of uh, pre-planning what you are going to sketch. And actually that's something that I'm going to talk about when we do the demo, um, how to include or how to decide what to include. If you want to include this, you need to start to figure out what are the biggest shape in your view. I'm gonna I'll give you an example. I think I everybody has a photo that I sent, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. This is the view that I sent, okay? And I did it on purpose. I wouldn't have sketched all of this. I did it on purpose because I wanna see how are you going to edit or select what is interesting to you. To me, this is not interesting. This is not interesting. To me, this is the highest contrast between the background and the dark uh, soldier, which by the way, this statue is amazing. I think we took this picture together, didn't we, Hannah? Yes. We were there. Mm -hmm. I took my husband there too, and it was amazing. I mean, this beautiful statue, very well placed. So because of that, this is a statue, I saw what is, what is the statue looking at? It's looking over the river, across the river. So I wanted to make it the main focus. So to me, 
I'm going to edit from here. I apologize, you don't have all the tools, but from here more or less, like this. This is what interest, is interesting to me. And this is what I'm gonna do um, for as a demo and editing, filtering, because sometimes when you are outside, especially in the streets when they're so busy, oh my God, it's overwhelming. You don't know what to sketch. But if you just have like one or two minutes to think about it, I think that you can come up with a better composition or something that you can deal easily. Um, in terms of skills, in terms of time. Uh, and this is more or less what I thought it was gonna be my final approach, my final, um, how do you say, uh, frame. You can use um, one of these, I don't use it, but if it is difficult for you to figure out what to include in a sketch, you can just use it and play with it. And you see, you can play with it like this. I like this view or I like this view, or I like only this, you know, you can choose whatever you want. And um, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, I'm sorry again, your name is? It was Ter Teresa. Who... Teresa, Teresa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you always start with the, with the biggest, once that you decide what you're going to sketch, then you uh, continue with the place in the biggest line. For example, in this case, I use this frame as uh, my border. So everything inside, I know is gonna fit. If I start with the fridge and then this and this, that, and I extend, I might just go this way and then I ended up with an incomplete view of what I intended. But if you put first the limits or the biggest line in the sketch, you're making sure that you are including what is uh, interesting to you. In this one, the longest line for, to me is this one right there. So once that I place it or can, kind of eyeball it on my page, then I do that line first. Uh, I usually go with ink. I don't do pencil very often. Uh, well, I didn't do it in pencil, but it's another another thing that I'm gonna talk about. Um, it's another kind. Uh, and I just go straight with ink. And what I like about that is that you finish faster. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you can just retrace a second line or a third line it's a sketch after all. And then you just continue playing with the proportions of what you are seeing, placing in reference. For example, if I do this one, um, how tall is gonna be the refrigerator from here to the, to the ceiling, to the corner in my view, and then just put it on paper so I can you know, have time for the floor, not like space for the floor and the cabinets and this wall. So it's just a matter of choosing exactly what you wanna put. And then once that you determine what you're gonna put, what you want to include in your sketch, just make the larger space, the larger line or, or the lar largest uh, uh, shape in your sketchbook and you go from there. Um, Does you mind pulling up the sketch that you didn't like, the one that you the kitchen oh. that you pulled out and then just stopped. Yeah. Oh, Jacksonville here again. <laughs> Jacksonville. Um, yes, it's, I think it's here somewhere. This one. Yes. Uh, this kitchen has two entrances. This one and th this is the other entrance. This is a view from that other entrance. I don't know, I didn't like because the, the stove was cut off. 
uh, I wasn't gonna see the umbrella that I was outside. I wanted to see more of the garden outside. So I did it, but uh, I stopped and start over. And then I did from the other entrance, I did the view from the other entrance and you know, the stuff was included, including the water and then part of the orange tree and the umbrella outside. And although it looks like very quirky, trust me, this kitchen was very quirky. It was different. It wasn't a, a 90 degrees angle. It was all weird, but it came out weird too. That's the way it was. I like it, I'm proud of it. So uh, that's why I changed my mind about this one because uh, I don't know, everything was cut off. This was cut off, this was cut off. So says, you know what? If you see from here, you can see the whole thing. You can see more stuff, more detail that I want to remember. To me, sketching is part of an activity that I do when I travel mostly, um, because to me, sketching on, on location is like a souvenir. Instead of, but well, I still buy things, right? They're unique to the place where you go, but also, I like to possess something that I know and I will remember because I did it. And that to me is very valuable, my memories. So Urban Kitchen is a fantastic tool to do that. Um, I try other sketches like this one is also a steel Berman, a little bigger, but this paper didn't like. This is Puerto Vallarta. I really didn't like it, uh, the paper. I don't know what paper is this, but this is a Cita, Cita, Cita series. So I stopped using it um, and I went bigger with this, uh, you know what? I think I can go a little, because they are gonna get bigger and bigger. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I use uh, bigger uh, sketches. To be honest with you, I am happy to do the line on location. I am not very patient to do this watercolor on location. Unless that is something small, I'll do it. But if it's bigger, it takes time. You know, I really get lost in detail with ink. That's my favorite part of a sketching. Again, that's my husband. He really is a big pardon. What size sketchbook is this? This is a seven by seven, I believe. Okay. Seven by seven. Um, and I start to do more uh, sketches this, you know, bigger. Your favorite. The paper is good, it's good. I really like it. Um, this is Chicago. I think you, you sketch this kind of, or was it, was it Jenny? I think it was Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Mm -hmm. um, I can show you more, but, um, you know, I tried different, I'm not Mary. I, 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 that is part of my motivation. What motivates me to sketch? I like to try different things. I like to try different um, sketchbooks, discover the properties, oh. how it behaves. Wow. Uh, this is in San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. Um, Rich colors. Thank you. Yeah, I love color. Yes. This woman made a blouse to blouses for me. It's like a backstrip. Um, how do you call that? Backstrip. Loom? Weaving loom. loom. Thank you. Yeah. It's not waist loom. It's backstrip loom. <laughs> I didn't know the term oh. correctly. But they made such a beautiful textiles. I was amazed by, by the work they do down there. Some tamales that I bought in the market, the church. This is in the mountains. It was cold as hell. This <laughs> one, this was cold, very windy. It was horrible. Uh, and I water color in there. I'm surprised that I stayed that long. Uh, these hummingbirds, they're not from direct view, 
but they were in, in the garden of the rental house that we, we stay in. They were like, oh my God, <laughs> they came. This was so aggressive. He was chasing this too, because it's a little bigger, but this was very territorial. And I found out what the names were and I just wrote the names. It was a fantastic experience. Um, went to the cemetery, to the traditions. Anyway, I, sometimes I glue some stuff there like this one is the, the ticket. This is a church that you don't, you don't, you're not allowed to take pictures inside. There is no benches in here. There is just like a pine needles on the floor, a lot of uh, candles. They do sacrifice animals inside. That is their way to honor their gods. And it was very, very mystic place. This is in uh, um, San Juan Bautista in Chamula, Chiapas. San Juan Chamula, Chiapas. That was amazing. So. I couldn't sketch inside, but I sketch outside. Um, so this is a bigger, this is with some prints. I, I, I went bigger and bigger and bigger, and then I use them all. I don't have a rule. If I feel I want to do something big, I do something big. I also went with the biggest one. This is, excuse me, this is one of the biggest one. This is a molly skin. I also like the, the, the paper, how it behaves. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? I beg your pardon? I'm running out of space. Maybe I can just. Oh. This is from uh, 2014. Rich color. This was an experiment, a fail experiment. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> this one is so bad too, but well, you need to practice some monuments in Joliet. This is in Route 66, one of those old gas stations. This is the Black Brothers. No, they, how do you call those brothers? The Blues, Blues Brothers. Brothers. The Blues Brothers, thank you. Oh my goodness. Here, I went to San Luis Potosí City in Central Mexico, and there was this exhibit about um, Dr. Gunther von Hagens. He has a technique called plastinization of bodies, which was uh, kind of forbidden in Germany. And then uh, when I asked permission to sketch, they asked me to request the permission in written, written in a letter. And I said, sure, I just submitted it. And they say, yes. So I went to the museum and I did this. It was absolutely uh, scary to see this ex exhibit. They, they look surreal. Look at these three parts, muscles or tendon bones, inner parts and muscles and the skin. It was weird. Uh, this is one of the largest I've done. Oh. So this I was a this was a theater. Remember those old days when those theaters it was just only one. Now we have multiple. Well, um, they obviously went into decline, but then they repurposed the building and they were. Um, redesign it to make it like a event uh you know place where you can do weddings or meetings and stuff like that and this is a shell from the acoustic that that helped the acoustics this was the screen or, you know the big screen and now is the now is the uh, parking lot for a restaurant that is under the theater so all of these things, um, this is actually the place from outside. Uh, so there's a lot of memories. Uh, this is one of the biggest ones that I've done. I took it, this took me three hours just to do ink. And my husband, I was testing my husband's patient. Actually he's <laughs> right there. 
This is my cousin <laughs> waiting for me. And this is the, the, the street level. So this is, this is Guanajuato City. And they have these tunnels that alleviate the growing traffic. It was a, a smart solution. But all the buses, the public transportation, oh my God, I have to smell all the smokes for three hours. But it was worth it. This was like, uh, I wanted to sketch something big, but it didn't come out right. But anyway, this is San Miguel de Allende, another double page spread. How long is, they all take like about three hours, those ones like that? Yeah, just the ink. It takes me three hours. Oh. Actually, I think I came back to, to, to because we were in, uh, we spent the winters away. Uh, I started one day and I returned the other day because a junkie was sitting next to me. So I have to interrupt myself. Um, <laughs> it was just bothering me. So I have to get out and leave. Are the, are the statues really like turquoise and dark like that? It's or are you copper. really cool it's with copper. your colors? It's huh? copper. It's copper, copper. You know, when it ages, it becomes yeah. kind of greenish. Yeah. It's totally uh, exaggerated, but. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, the shades, I, I really use the purple. My favorite mix is um, alizarin crimson and French ultramarine, uh, but I'm trying to change that uh, to other bluish colors that I learned from Santi Sages, uh, the Spanish painter. Uh, this is in Ireland. I went exclusively to see, to attend this workshop with Roisin. Roisin Cure, which was the instructor. This is my drawing at that time. I was hidden in the steps of this wall because the wind was so miserably cold, but I finished it. And she sent me her version. This is her version. So as you can see, I put this one, this is a gift. She gave it to me. So cool. this is her version in high tide. And I, this is my version in low tide. So she, as you can see, this is the red boat, hers. I'm sorry, here. Hers, and this is mine. This is the green, and this is mine. And then this boat here, mm -hmm. are here, in, in, you know, it's the same elements. It's like they never go out for, for fishing. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody has a designated place. I don't know. So anyway, so I want to, I, I like to do, uh, this was with the urban sketchers. We went to the Baha'i's Baha house in Wilmette, Illinois. I don't know if you went to that one, Hannah. Yes. And we went to the Jackson Park Jack Club also. So I didn't finish, I, I didn't finish this one. This is where we are right now. This is my studio and that's it. And finally, um, I started to do my own. Uh, sketchbooks. Oh. No, I'm sorry. This one. <laughs> this one with better. I started with very cheap watercolor paper. I mean paper, and then when you learn over time, you just start to buy better paper. And then what I did, I started to buy the the uh, arches. Mm -hmm. 140 pound watercolor gold press paper. And uh, this is the sketchbook that I did, but I removed the, I removed the, the pages because I didn't wanna, you know, go everywhere with them. This sketch took me three hours, just mm -hmm. the ink. This is my neighbor's backyard. As you can see, the size is also bigger. It's one piece. This is in Chicago, a demo. I did that uh, for the urban sketchers, but I finished it later because we didn't finish it. Um, this is in Morelia. This is Iowa. It took me three hours to finish the whole thing. And I was so glad that I had golden watercolor in my palette because yeah, it came out handy. <laughs> what, yeah. what can, um, that golden paint, what, what is that? What? what a color gold paint. Um, if you allow me, I can stand up and let me get it because I have to show it to you. Um, Turn it 
Teresa, I feel like that blends right in with a lot of what you do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's exactly why I was like, oh, I need to know what this gold paint is. I need to know. Oh, yeah. This oh, man. This oh, is not. Ready mm -hmm. Arts on Main Street um, has that. Oh, they do? Yes. I think that every, every, every brand has its own set of uh, golden colors and silver. The towels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the brand. This is very cheap brand. It's the um, Finetech. Finetech. Okay, okay. Finetech. It's more for, for children. I don't know if it is a good brand or not, but I have this brand. I, I don't use it very often because they're kind of opaque and mm. I'm not sure that I like them. Um, but this is the same brand and I really like it. And uh, I had this with me at the time that I was doing this, uh, the capital of the, uh, in Iowa. I went specifically to, to uh, Iowa to do these bridges because I love this movie, The Bridges of uh, Madison County. Yeah. County, exactly. So I look for them and I sketch them, all the four of them on location, all of them. Oh, wow. And I put my name in one of those. I don't remember which one. You know, there's people who put their name there. <laughs> I think it's going to disappear once that they give the maintenance and they're going to paint everything over, over what people wrote, but uh, it was fun. It was fun. I think one of these burned already. There was big fire over there, sadly, but here it is. Thank Lord. I have a sketch in the, my public library. Oh, you see one of those cubicles? Mm -hmm. So quiet, nobody bothers you. Nicely, nicely. This is, um, this also took me three hours to do just the ink. And then I watercolor it at home. This is San Miguel de Allende, my husband again. Here, the light was bouncing from the, it was so strong, the sun, it was bouncing from the, from the floor. So the lower part of the trunks was highlighted and the upper part of the trunk was darker. So that's why it looks like that. It looks like he's not doing correctly, but it was actually the way it looked. I should have taken a picture by the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I've done um, this size, but then <clears throat> I, because I do ink, all of these, by the way, is um, watercolor, uh, cold press watercolor paper, but it's very texture. So I finally says, well, why don't you try hot watercolor paper? And that's when I started to do my own sketchbooks. <clears throat> I learned how to do um, sketchbooks. I went to Ann Arbor, Michigan, to the, um, it's a store that is called um, Hollanders. Uh, they close the store for workshops, but they still sell online all the materials for book casing. And in fact, they did their own book which if anybody is interested, this is a great book they wrote. Tom Hollander and Cindy Hollander. Tom was our instructor. And he, I really wanted to learn the proper way to do the sketches because I try, I'm, as I said, I'm a crafty person, but I try without knowing. I'll show you in a minute. I did this sketchbook and look can you hear mm -hmm. yeah. it's cracking i tried to do it myself i was using the wrong glue but you did the sewing the pages and everything i can see that yes i did yeah. it with tutorial videos but i never use it it's very uncomfortable just to hear it right. I, I never used it and this is a character i beg your pardon it just gives it character <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but then I started like, to, to do my own. Where's my crackly sketchbook at? <laughs> <laughs> my cracking sketchbook. <laughs> um, and then I started to use um, hot watercolor paper because it's easier on the ink, 
on the, on the, on the fountain pens. I use um, these fountain pens. These are my, my pens to go, which is a Lamy. Everybody knows the Lamy Safari. And I use uh, this one, which is very, uh, this is a Pilot, Namiki Pilot, which is a flexible uh, nib. It gives me thin and thick lines and it's a joy to use this one. And I also use it for leathering, um, like this one, well, not here, but where here, for example, I like to use this for for these letters. Letters, I no, not there. Well, sometimes, not always. So I start to use. Oh, here it is. This. So I start to use my uh, paper, uh, the one that I like, the size that I like. I'm comfortable with. This is about uh, ten by seven inches. Is uh, the the size that uh, I can use most paper of the you know the size the is what 22 by 30 inches uh, sheets of papers and uh, I am happy I, I think I found my my happy place with paper because it's easy with the taste the pen glides easily and it tastes well watercolor not like uh, you know, what go, I back, call go back to that one. This one. Uh, yeah, hang on. Someone's calling me. Sorry, I interrupted. Wow, I just want to see that line work. That's stunning. Thank you. I think that sometimes uh, you go with intentions to put watercolor, but there is so much work, and it says I think it's going to be distracting. Yeah, so yeah. You can I just see it black. It's cool. Yeah, I've used that techniques in another one uh, when I was in Charleston. Um, here, it was absolutely freezing and I didn't want to stay long there. I went to the market in Charleston and I use the same concept, two inks only. Mm -hmm. And I finished it. I wanted to finish it. And it's something that I do sometimes. Just let go, let go, and let the lines shine. And I think it can. It brought your attention, right? Yes. Mm. I'm sorry for the light. I'm, I'm struggling with the light. And uh, I do my my sketches is my happy end. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable to have to hold this, you know, because it's too long, but um, it's okay. It's okay. I can work with my laps. I can put it in my, in my, in my, le in my legs. And, and I try to include four corners here. This is one, two, three, and four. I struggle a little bit, but I think it was worth it. And then on my uh, sketchbooks, I put this paper, which is uh, called Mohawk paper. It takes ink very nicely because it doesn't bleed and it's thick enough. And I put it in between pages so I can write about the experience. I can write about uh, the place or I can write about the technique or I can write about experience, yeah. It's so wonderful to see all of these paintings of San Miguel, that's, I spent a week there painting and it's just one of my favorite places. These are really oh, wonderful. Thank you. I did this with um, the Urban Sketchers, San Miguel de Allende with the, yeah. um, oh my God, I forgot her name. And this is, uh, I did so just ink in this restaurant, the Pozole is outstanding. And you know that they say that you should put people to make your, your sketch alive and everything was, well, instead of people, I'm gonna put the pictures of people because they were there, why not? Mm -hmm. I was the only one at the restaurant. So I said, well, let's do it. And he also, I put these people later though. 
but this I did on location. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, what I, this is one sketchbook that I have. I have the other one here. This has different papers. I've used them with expensive papers because I wanted to see what is the difference. I use the um, Lan Aquarel, HP 140, Arches, HP, uh, and Stonehenge Legion. All of them are fantastic. I think that the, the, best, one, the best one is Lan Aquarel and Arches is the less favorite. But I put here some colors to identify the white paper is I'm using, yeah? To determine later, but I really don't, which one I like best, but I really don't notice any difference. And this one is a cheaper paper that I use, but it's still usable. This is a street modeling from the car. This is a car wash from the car in my community. This is more like local things to my community. From the car, it was gonna rain. From my car also. From my car in Morris. So this is, a, uh, I, I ran out of paper, so I just put half page here. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. Do the watercolor sheets have a, a good side and a bad side? Or are both sides sort of equally Accept, accepting to the paper. They're supposed pink. to be a reverse, and, and, a, and but I really don't don't notice the difference. I haven't paid attention because it works both sides, uh, the, the paper. So it, it works well. I don't have complaints at all. This is another example of a lot of detail, but this is not made on location though. This is made from a picture. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. This is was an experience. The construction. The, the, oh God. Well, I can tell you the story, but I don't want to make it long. Um, yeah, this is what I, this is my ultimate experiences in Charleston. This I made here. I made here because it was it's impossible to see this row of houses like this impossible because there's it's so long that it's impossible to do so I just took a picture of every one of this in a video and then I went from there and, and did it but this is not made on location but I, I like to work as I said I like to work at my home the comfort of my home and this is what I do uh what inspires me um there is like several things that inspires me I like to watch people online uh, their work. Uh, I take workshops when I can. I like uh, reading books and uh, I like to try different materials also as a way to stimulate me or, or as a way to motivate me to do uh, more sketching. For example, when I did my sketches, my sketchbooks, I wanted to sketch in them. So that forced me. All of these flowers were given to me by but the lady who was cleaning, she changed the flowers every week. So that was precious to me. Uh, so making things like this motivates me to, to keep going, uh, looking at other people, making workshops. And I like to read also. Uh, one of my favorite um, illustrationists, illustration, illust Illustrators. Illustrators, thank you. Yeah. It's uh, David Gentleman. Gentleman. I really like his style. It's so minimalist. It just uses just one, two, three, like three colors, and he's done. But he's, he's massive what he does. It's amazing. He has gone to different countries. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but it's amazing what he does. Uh, in watercolor, I, I really like because he works. Uh, he, for, to me, uh, my style is do ink and then apply watercolor. So he, I have several books from this person, and then I also recommend this book highly, Felix Scheinberger. This is a book about 
mostly watercolor, but how, what techniques and materials do you use uh, to sketch on location with watercolor? This is um, very pleasant to re re read and informative, very well structured. Uh, he knows his stuff. And I really like for that. I really like this book for that. So, and there's another one that I really like, but uh, uh, I don't have books from him. His name is um, Matthew Cook. He's also English. And he's very, very, he works with inks, color inks, and he is absolutely amazing. So those are the persons and books and workshops and just viewing uh, on Instagram. Uh, the work of others is very inspiring. And that's why, uh, that's how I keep myself, you know, motivated. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't know if you have any questions. I think that that's about it. Um, this is my uh, war horse. I use uh, pencils. Sometimes I, I like this one for people because uh, people move fast and I need to sketch fast. So when I do the, the lines, I'm also using color. So it's two in one, which I like. Um, I'm lately using these uh, pencils, the old days, Faber Castle. It's not old days, it's um, Pete old days. Faber Castle, and they are absolutely amazing because these pencils give me very dark lines and they don't, don't smooch easily. Uh, so, because that's what is frustrating with me when I use pencil, graphite, uh, you do a line and you go over it and then it smudges and it looks grayish and I don't like that. So with this one, have you, have you ever used any of this? No. No, this is a great, a great pencil um, because you do a line like this and it doesn't really smudge really easily. And with this one, sometimes you can see the difference. What am I doing here? Well, it's a good pencil though. <laughs> this is a Mitsubishi Uni. HP, it was a gift that I got in a raffle in Urban Sketchers, and I absolutely love these, these pencils. They glide on the paper, I love them. Um, for whites, I use uh, the Posca uh, acrylic thing or marker. Everybody uses the jelly, jelly roll in several thicknesses. Um, for inks, I use, um, I started with multiple, I tried them all, and I finally married to this one's Diatramentis documented ink. They're easy on the paints, and they don't clog so easily, and they are absolutely no, they're waterproof totally. I use this one, the black, and the brown. This is almost empty. Brown, I love, I like those. Um, for whites, I also use um, this. I started to make experiments with the buff titanium. When I mix it with regular color, regular transparent colors, it makes beautiful pastels, but they are a little bit opaque. So instead of, instead of buying a bunch of watercolor pastels, I just mix this with any of these colors and it gives me pastels. If you don't mind not being transparent, you can save some box right there. Um, then I also, where's, I think uh, I'm missing my, I'm missing my white um, wash, Winston and Newton. I don't know where it is, but I also use that one for whites. Um, Brushes on the go, I use these ones. We start the Da Vinci, travel, 
size. They are absolutely amazing. The fact that you can, they're portable. The, the tip doesn't get damaged. Um, I have in different sizes, which I'm gonna use now. And um, yeah, those are my, my tools so far. And the water brush, I use it for a while in a while. When I do smaller sketches, I use uh, two different tips, the small one and the big one. This one for details and this one for bigger, broader, broader, broader um, brushes, um, washes. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I use. Am I talking too much? How, what time Hello. is it? <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Wonderful. All right. Do you have any questions? This is the synthetic Casanillo. I got the, the point and the flat brush. This, this ones I don't use very much. I prefer this ones. And this is also natural hair. Don't ask me what brand is, but I think it's a Skoda. I don't remember. And this is what I use um, for on the go. Mm -hmm. I have this spray also for my watercolors. I always Regret it when regret them. One of the things that I like about um, this uh, brand, the brand of, um, mm, oh my God. I'm sorry, it's been a long day today. My mind is super tired. Um, the White Knights, this is Russian brand and I like to rewet them. It behaves more or less like Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith rewets easily. Winsor and Newton is like hard rock. When you want to rewet it, you need to wait a long time and more water and this pick up easily. So I like that, that feature about this, but that you can, you go through them real fast, but they're cheaper than Daniel Smith and, or Winsor and Newton. Those are the brands that I have used so far. So um, I don't know what the prices are for the other ones, but um, I'm experimenting with this ones and I like them. I like them. I actually bought have them. You, hmm? Have you done experimentation with watercolor pencils? Yes, I have. And uh, I don't think it's uh, something that I like to do. I try them, okay. but no, I don't, I don't, I don't like them. I, I prefer, this medium instead of the watercolor pencils. Because uh, you have to rush, rub a lot the paper. It's like, uh, and sometimes you have to, in order to dissolve very well, or maybe it depends on the brand. Um, but my experience with the watercolor pencils are not, not, or maybe I'm not using it correctly. I'm not sure. But you know, that's another opportunity to explore and see I, what, can, what I can do with it, huh? And then this one's here. This is the ones that I bought with Bear Selection, but I haven't opened them yet. So I'm gonna try this St. Petersburg or White Knights. It's the same. It's the same brand. Questions? <laughs> no. No? Okay. So uh, what time is it, if you don't mind me? It is 9.30. Okay. Um, do you want to leave it at that? you want to do a demo or, or what do you want to do? You have given us so much information. It has been wonderful. And seeing your work, it's Thank so you. inspiring. And just how you arrive at... Um, you know, your inspirations and everything. Thank you for sharing all of that with us. Um, You're welcome. I think it's been a pleasure just to share. Um, I like to hear, I'm curious, you know, other people, what other people, and, 
sometimes uh, people focus only on materials, but they don't talk about how often, what inspires them, why, you know, the whys and whats and hows. It's a mystery still, you know, but hopefully we will have more time to talk about that and, and um, share with each other our experiences, which is to me very interesting. Absolutely. Hey, uh, hey, Adriana, if I could, this is Chris, how are you? Hi, Chris, uh, how are you doing? You were in the last session. Yeah, awesome, uh, awesome work, obviously. You know, what, what intrigues me is the patience that you have to take that amount of time for a, uh, for a sketch. You know, three hours, uh, I, 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 I don't, I think I'd maybe do 10 <laughs> sketches. And do, you know, I don't, as I get older, my patients get so much shorter. But so in, in a lot of the exercises we do as a group are mm -hmm. just quick observational sketches and things of that sort. Do you have, do you find that as part of your repertoire? Do you, do you practice quick observation maybe within three and five minutes to see what you can capture? And then go back and maybe take a little bit more time to to do a more finished sketch. How do you feel about that? Uh, from from that that technique, anyway. Yes, I I am a person who uh, really don't like when I do sketches fast enough. The on clarity of I know that sketch is something like is more like a like a more uh, loose mm. loosely done and. Uh, I don't know if my drawings sometimes don't go into that category of a sketching. Um, this could be controversial, but a sketching that style is, um, to me, I, I may be so city, but I really like to see, I really like to put information on my paper about what I'm seeing because I like detail. When mm -hmm. I do uh, a small, fast sketches, I have to do them small. Otherwise I won't finish. And I have done it. I have some, I have uh, done some examples of that. It takes me not five minutes or, or, or 10 minutes. Uh, I don't go back to those sketches uh, because I think that that sketch is just a unique experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I did this when I was doing uh, coffee no, it's not coffee. It's um, ponche. I don't know what you you know what ponche is. It's a it's a hot fruity drink in Mexico, doing during the Christmas. Uh, I do a small sketches also, but it is not 10, 10 or five minutes. I cannot accomplish something that maybe this one. Mm. You see, but they don't come out. It is not pleasant to me to see something because I know I can do better, but I I. I I need time. You see, I did this, when was it? January 1st, oh, this is um, New Year's Eve. We <laughs> had a party with mariachis, maybe I was too drunk, I don't know. This <laughs> might be all wrong, but you know, this is like my fast, one of my fastest probably speaking of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I prefer to do something more detailed. You know, this is probably like 20 minutes a sketch you know, but, but faster than that to me is, is not, I have mm. to tell you uh, a story. Uh, I don't like pressure. When I do fast sketches, I feel like I am under pressure that I have to finish fast. I have to do it right away. And this is really fast. Actually, we went to the uh, Sia pyramids in Cañada de la Virgen in Guanajuato outside San Miguel de Allende and the gates were closed. So somebody went to look for the guy who had the key to open the, 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 the gates, the gate, and it took 10 minutes the most, and I did this one while we were waiting for the door to be open. So this is what a 10 minute sketch looks like. I've done it, but I've done it under very strenuous and very stressful circumstances, and I don't like stress. To me, this is something enjoyable, or maybe I put a lot of pressure on myself, but to me, it's enjoyable, an enjoyable activity. Uh, this is inside the, uh, how do you call that? It's like a spa with a, with a pool. It was so hot, it's spring water. See what, I went inside with this sketch 
everybody was moving around. I just put my husband there, but everybody, I was doing this in the water, sketching, and all these pages started to bend like this because of the humidity. And I, I was so uncomfortable, I had to get out. And I do some washes later. So this pencil that you see is done in five minutes. This is a short one. Uh, so it's not, this is a five minute probably, no, not 10 minutes. So yeah, I do them. I really, I was fascinated by this woman, her nails and her haircut. It was just 10 minutes. I've that's done a, it. That's a great I, sketch. Yeah, oh, that's a great thank sketch. You. Yeah. Thank you. But um, I rather, this is Mike, the, 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 the Cubara. Thank you. Yeah, this is Mike, uh, one of the sketch, the, one of the workshops. She was sketching. And um, yeah, I do them, not often, but I really enjoy the tape. And when I go outside and do details, I get lost and I, I'm, I love it. I love mm -hmm. to get lost in detail. Well, thank you for that. That's a, that's a wonderful answer. And, and don't sell yourself short on your quick sketches because they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> they're, they're just as expressive as well. So thank uh, you. It's wonder, wonderful work. Thank you. Um, do you have any more questions? Anybody? But there's only two people. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this this is Pat. I just I have a comment on uh, on your your books. I uh, thank you so much for showing us all of your sketchbooks. Your um, pen work is absolutely amazing. You can tell you're extremely detail oriented, and your yeah. color, your sense of color. You have the deepest, richest colors. Oh, thank you so much. Book. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. You know what? Everybody has his own style. I really admire people who do uh, things that I cannot do, really. But uh, if I put myself under that pressure of doing something fast and very chaotic, it has this energy and this uh, organic feeling that is, oh, I wish I could do that. But then I know that I can do something that other people like. So everybody has his own and uh -huh. is totally respectable. But I wish I could do something like that. But the process of doing it, I don't, I, I cannot cope with that yet. Maybe I need to practice on that, huh? That is an opportunity to improve <laughs> in, in, in something more loose and, and uh, you know, expand my skills. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you. Beautiful work. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. I think this is Connie. I think this is the beauty of, of the whole form of urban sketching and um, presence that everything is okay with everybody in telling their story. Yes. But the way people tell their stories is one, fascinating. Your work is fascinating. Love the detail. I would be admitted somewhere if I spent that time doing that much detail. <laughs> it's just, just like, uh, I, I want to be done. So, but I think that's the beauty of it that everybody is, it's okay to tell their story in their own way. And, and uh, yours is gorgeous. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. I, I've seen, uh, that's the beauty. I mean, there is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It is, you do what you do. And keep doing it if you enjoy it, right? And let others be others. And that's the and I think I think the other thing we take away from it, we always learn something to apply with however we do the art mm -hmm. from someone like you. Um, oh, yes. Wh whether it's in the angles, the color. Uh, I would love to see you do color just to see how you pull out the brightness. Uh, I expect to use more paint than I probably do, and I go too thin. Yeah, uh, that would be my guess. Or else you do it more than once. I'm not sure, but that would that would be a very interesting process. Yes, yes. It's um, because I started with watercolor. I really stuck with uh, the lesson that I received, and I tend to do that more color. Uh, but I also like to do layers. So that's why yeah. I, when I do um, ink on location, 
I like to do it in my studio because I don't have the patience to wait until it dries because I like layers oh. and I like uh, more detail, uh, more, you know, more control, uh, you know, apl application of color instead of the cows. I think I should, you know, there is an opportunity there too to, to play with watercolors because you have to let, let them mix and do what they do. Uh, but layers, to me, the glazes are something is unique to our color and I, that's why I love that media because you can see through the it's not the same mixing it on the palette that doing the layers on 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 uh, on paper and so you've just given us one of your your secrets to, to getting the width to look the way it is and that is a lot of layering and glazing. layering 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 and uh, if it is just uh, for example I love the reds for, let's say uh, a building in Mexico, the, the colors are so rich, especially in San Miguel de Allende, whoever is, has been there. Um, when you put a layer, you know that one layer that you apply is uh, looks wet, looks very rich, but when it dries, it dries. Comes, exactly, when it dries, it looks a little, you know, less. Yeah, it's been there. <laughs> this, yeah, and I was like, put another layer. Put an, until okay. you get the color that you want. Otherwise, uh, it will, it will come out to light. Another thing that I think that a lot of people are afraid of is the darks on, on the sketches. You know, you see um, people doing their sketches, but it is more like at the same value. Instead of doing like a strong versus value, there is a contrast there, there is tension, there is interest. And sometimes that is lacking in uh, some illustrations that I've been seeing, but I'm working myself on that because I used to do that. I'm working on mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. And that makes, uh, you know, um, the sketch, uh, it adds to the, to the sketch. But as I said, you know, this um, techniques that I use, a lot of detail, it might not be into the sketches, might more like a drawing, <laughs> but uh, hey, to each his own, right? That's fascinating. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for, it's been wonderful. Thanks for asking. Hello. Yeah, I think they were wonderful. I'm like you. I tend to get out there and I start drawing and I've spent all my time drawing and then I have very little time to paint. I get caught up in the details and I'm trying to work on that to these quick draws that we do are really yeah. helping me a lot, but I'm one that likes to put in take my time, I get the drawing and I enjoy the drawing and I forget about the painting and that's, you know, I need to do that too. So I've really enjoyed this. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, I mean, if you want to really practice, you need to set your time a timer, you know, 10 minutes, let's do it. And then you do what you can do with color, with pencil or with line and then color or color and then pencil, but you need to time yourself otherwise, um, it has to have, you have to have a goal. Otherwise I can, I can get lost like you. Well, that's what's Detail. great about this group because that's where I get the timers because they do it one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And, and it's great. You don't even have time to think. And, and I love it. It's really good. It's a wonderful oh. group. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you are enjoying it then. Yeah. I think I need to join you guys to practice yes. my fast sketches. Huh? <laughs> you know, you know what I think the fast sketching does for me, it has increased my ability for observation, mm -hmm. you know, because you have to see it quickly. So yeah. I am so much more observant now than I ever was before. It has really helped. It's really helped me. Yes. Yes. But I would, I also would like to sit for three hours and draw every detail. Yes. Yeah. It's as I said, you know, you just, I just get lost. That's the truth. I just get lost and it's just, I just can stay there. If it wasn't because somebody's waiting for me, I would stay longer, but I really enjoy the lines. And then the watercolor is this, okay, if I'm gonna start to do watercolor, I, I have to stay here for another three hours. I don't have the patience. I don't have the patience for that. So that's why I do it later, you know. But yeah, if it wasn't for my husband waiting for me being so nicely and, you know, patiently waiting for me, I don't think, I think I would just be doing the, you know, fast sketches, I guess. <laughs> like he's very patient. Yeah, because we were together. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you are enjoying your, uh, that your, um, that um, dynamics that you have, you know, fast sketches, that's, that's, that's good.
That's yeah. good. And that you're learning. Yes, it's very good. Perfect. But thank you so much. Yeah, it's well, very, really opened my eyes to many, to your drawing, to your techniques, to your use of color. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that watercolor is another subject, isn't it? <laughs> yes. 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 That's his own thing. yes. Yeah, I think we, we need to bring you again. Oh, uh, for, okay. It will be my pleasure. Sure. <laughs> it will, if, you have, if, if you have the time, we, we constantly have this meeting. So I think we would love to, to have you. Of course, and anytime. It, uh, yeah, I really enjoy my time talking a lot. I need a little bit of water. Thank you for listening. Um, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for yes, sharing. Yes, beautiful. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful work. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. Bye. Everyone, take care. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.